Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am really good, Brian. It's our favorite show of the year, Brian, when we talk about our Kentucky Derby wagers, because the Kentucky Derby only happens once a year with 20 horses in the field. Matt, I'm going to have to disagree with you right away, right out of the gate. It's our favorite show if we give out some big winning tickets, and that's what we plan to do, folks. It's Kentucky Derby wagering show. You know, Matt, come on. We're going to we're gonna give out some big tickets here. Let's do it. How about we start with the Derby itself, Matt? And I'm going to let you, my friend, go first. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate that. And, and as always, uh, one of the wagers that I – that I like to play in the Derby and present on Horse Center is the trifecta. It is a wager that has had some big payoffs in the past, although recently, you know, in the Derby, uh, not as much, but I'm, I, I've got a 50 to one horse at the heart of my trifectas and all of my wagers, actually folks, as you're gonna see, all of them have to do with the Derby the trifecta is all in the Derby race. All my other wagers end with the Derby because, Brian, I want to take advantage of that 20-horse field to get some big prices. So here we go. I'm focusing on sainthood from Todd Pletcher, Todd Pletcher, who was 50 to 1 on the morning line, who was second in the Jeff Ruby stakes on the Tapita surface, which, which is irrelevant for my choice uh, of the horse began his career on the dirt in that Jeff Ruby was making a big move got completely stopped lost all momentum got back running remarkably remarkably fast came down the lane and finished second beaten just the length I think this is a horse that has a chance to get into the trifecta at 50 to 1 and that's all I want I want him to get into the trifecta at second or third, I'm going to use with Sainthood my top five choices in the Kentucky Derby, which will be the same in all of my tickets. They will be in the first position in my trifectas. In the first ticket, Sainthood will be singled in the second spot. And then in the third spot, there will be 10 horses. My top five choices to win the Derby will be there, along with Midnight Bourbon, Highly Motivated, Helium, Obesos, and King Fury. That's a $22.50 ticket for the minimum 50 cent wager. Then my other trifecta ticket will be essentially the same, except Sainthood will be in the third spot. Our main man, Tony Bada Bing, has made some beautiful, beautiful graphics, as you see on the screen. If you're interested in playing these tickets, uh, uh, hit pause, grab a screenshot so that you can go back and um, make your bets later on. This is a, a, a trifecta play where you're focusing on who's going to come in underneath. If you think St. Hood is a crazy pick and you've got a different bomber, then swap in your bomber. Swap in your bomber. I always like when you end your uh, your speeches with that line, Matt. Swap in your bomber. I love it, folks. And hey, if you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel here on Horse Racing Nation, please do that now. Turn on the notifications. You don't want to miss any of our Triple Crown coverage right here on Horse Center. Matt, I wish you the best of luck with St. Hood. He's not on my tickets. I think the hill might be a little too uh, high for him to climb because I just don't think those horses in the Ruby stakes were good. But on the other hand, he's looked good here at the track. Maybe he's getting really good at the right time. He certainly did have trouble in that Ruby. I'm going to go with trifectas as well for my uh, favorite derby wager here. I have him listed at $1 trifecta keys, folks. And again, you can make that smaller. 50 cent is available or, uh, or, or bigger if you're, if you're a uh, big wheeler out there. These uh, three tickets are $56 a piece. That's with the $1 trifecta. 
So the total would be $168 there. If you wanted to lower it to uh, 50 cents, I guess that would be an $84 total wager. Anyway, Hot Rod Charlie's my horse. I think this is a pretty tough derby nut to crack this year, but I just like everything about Hot Rod Charlie, Matt. Hot Rod Charlie is, I like the connections. Uh, Doug O'Neill obviously gets knows how to get a horse ready for the Kentucky Derby. Flavian Prod is just about the hottest rider in the world right now. He actually got the win in a derby a couple years ago by DQ. But I think Hot Rod Charlie is the right horse. I like the way he's come up to this race with two races this year. The last one was six weeks away. He did it at a mile and three sixteenths. He finished off that Louisiana Derby really well. He's got good tactical speed to kind of go with the recent trend of being near or on the lead. I think he'll be probably sitting third, fourth, or fifth early in this Derby. I think he's going to run a big race, whether that means first, second, or third won't matter for my trifecta key because I'm going to key him for first. I'm going to key him for second and I'm going to key him for third in these three different tickets. All of the tickets will be the same. Otherwise, Hot Rod Charlie in first with eight horses boxed for second and third. In those eight horses, I'm going to use the three horses. I think he's got the most competition for the win from. Essential Quality, the champ. Rockier World, the speedy, talented horse from California. And Known Agenda on the rail from Todd Pletcher, the Florida Derby winner. I'm going to throw in my top three long shots as we talked about on the last show. That's Obesis, Dynamic One, and King Fury. I'm also liking Highly Motivated a little bit more after I looked at his uh, his form. I think maybe second time around two turns, he can even improve off that bluegrass effort, which was already very good. And then I'm going to throw in a real long shot. I think he'll be way longer than Sainthood even, Matt. That's Brooklyn Strong. I think in the Wood Memorial, uh, he didn't get a good trip. He was stuck on a dead rail. When he started to come through the rail, it was it was uh, shut down. He's working great. I think he fit with these horses as a two-year-old. So if I can get this horse in the triple at 50, 60 to one, I'll be happy. Those are the eight horses I'm playing. The second and third ticket, obviously, will just move Hot Rod Charlie to second with the eight horses in first and third. And finally, Hot Rod Charlie in third with those same eight horses Bach for first and second. That's my Derby trifecta, Matt. I'm going to let you tell people why I'm crazy, or you can jump right into your Kentucky Oaks bet. Well, Brian, I think for both of us, we're relying on uh, getting some bombers in those trifecta plays. I like your strategy, is, of course, is very sound, but obviously you want to avoid a ticket where, uh, for instance, Hot Rod Charlie wins, essential quality comes in second and rock your world comes in third you know that's not what you're looking for there both of us are looking for bombers i've got a bomber built into mine i guess i've got more risk on my ticket yeah well matt i agree with you completely because i really don't feel like and it's a great point I really don't feel like this is going to be favorite, favorite, favorite. Hot Rod Charlie's eight to one in the morning line. There's some odds there, but I really expect one of the two spots, maybe even both of the two spots, the other two spots are filled by a long shot. Yeah, I hope that's the case. I've, I've been, you know, I've been disappointed uh, a number of times in recent years when the, the Derby trifecta has chalked out. How about your Kentucky Oaks bets, Matt? You want to start us off there? Absolutely, Brian. Um, in my in the Kentucky Oaks, I am going to do a Kentucky Oaks, Kentucky Derby two day daily double. I am singling in the Oaks Malathot. I know you might you folks might be saying, "Oh, but you guys, you and Brian, it was travel column, Clary Air, travel column, Clary Air all along." Well, yeah, that's true, folks. But that was until Malathot. Uh, came back to the races in the Ashland. Uh, um, I'm all about Malathot in here. I, I, I think, you know, uh, Travel Column and Clarier are good, but they've been beating each other uh, uh, in the last few races. So I'm going to single Malathot in the Oaks, and I'm going to use my five top choices from the Derby, Essential Quality, Hot Rod Charlie, Known Agenda, Rock Your World, and dynamic one. Again, I want to emphasize getting better prices because I'm using that 20 horse Kentucky Derby field. 
Yeah, Matt's got some favorites there, but uh, still won't be a real low payoff if he can if he can find the right one, especially if it's dynamic one. I, however, have not jumped on Malifaux yet. Uh, I think she's a wonderful filly. She's made a wonderful appearance here at Churchill Downs in the morning. But I just think the way she uh, got up in the last few jumps last year in the Demoiselle and got up with a hard race in her only race this year in the last few jumps over past the Champagne, who's in the race last time in the Ashland. I think with 14 horses and a lot of good horses, I think she's going to have a lot to do if she expects to make that big late run to get up again in here. I'm going to try to beat the favorite in the Oaks. Uh, not that she's a heavy favorite. I think Travel Column should be close as well, but I just like Claire Air and Travel Column all year long. I think they are coming up to the race well. They both raced at Churchill Downs before, unlike Malavat, uh, and they both had races this year, and they both had tough races this year. I like the way they're coming to this race. I think they're for real, so I will be using those two, and my bet is going to be a $10 pick three. I'm going to go after this one. And we talked about Matt saying, well, you don't really want Hot Rod Charlie on two favorites in my triple up top. Yeah, but if I can get to Hot Rod Charlie in this bet, I'll be really happy because I'm only using uh, two horses in the Oaks, Clarier, Travel Column. I'm only using two horses, my top two horses in the Turf Classic, which is the race before the Derby on Saturday. So it's a $2 pick three. I I'm sorry, a $10 pick three over two days. That's Colonel Liam and Smooth Like Straight. Then I'm going to just jump, put all my uh, pick three eggs in one basket, my, my top horse. That's Hot Rod Charlie. This ticket will cost you $40 if it hits, especially depending on who, who gets there. It's going to be a really nice cash for me. Yeah, Brian. And again, you're taking advantage of that 20 horse field and what that does to payoffs in, uh, in the last leg. Brian, that turf classic is one stacked up tough field. Uh, um, and, and Colonel Liam is the best turf horse in the country right now. Smooth like straight has a shot, but boy, that's a tough race. It is a tough race, but I, I think Colonel Liam, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this, but I think Colonel Liam is the best turf horse in the country right now. And I think he's only getting better after being uh, brought to the races late. And I see smooth like straight as a lone speed in this race. A mile eighth on turf, it's not wired too often. But I tell you what, with no other speed horse in the race, he becomes a whole lot more dangerous. Speaking of dangerous, Matt, uh, Friday, I, I think I think there's a dangerous, uh, uh, the danger of having last year's Kentucky Oaks winner beaten as a pretty big favorite uh, in the grade one La Troyenne on Friday. She dares the devil, certainly will be the, uh, the horse people are looking at. She won the Oaks last year. She beat Latruska in her only race this year, but that was a tough race in her first start back. I think maybe she could bounce off that a little bit, but there's also a bunch of speed in this La Troyan to kind of keep her company early. I like Dunbar Road a whole lot. Dunbar Road is a classy mare who hasn't been raced a ton in her career. And now I think she's ready to have a big year at five. Chad Brown always has his top horses ready. First time out. I think she's going to get the trip in this La Troyan. So I'm going to player she'll probably be the second choice chad brown trainee irad ortiz jr i said flavian pratt might be the hottest jockey in the world probably it's irad ortiz jr number one flavian pratt number two i'm gonna bet 50 to win on dunbar road to upset she dares the devil in the lot ran hey good pick with uh, uh chad brown but boy i'll tell you i just know from belmont park that the uh, betters had just been absolutely crushing everything that Irad Ortiz has been getting on. I know this is the Derby and Oaks days, a uh, different field, different jockeys. Uh, but uh, Hey, I, I like how you're uh, just putting the money on the nose. There you go, Matt, wh what's your, uh, let's start your other bets here. I know you're uh, looking at a few bets on Saturday. Yeah, Brian. Um, I've got a couple other bets. Uh, let's start with the, the briefer one, and it, it relates a little bit to what you've talked about. It's a daily double going into the Kentucky Derby. So it's a daily double with the Turf Classic and the uh, Kentucky Derby. I'm going to take a shot to, to, to beat uh, Colonel Liam um, just because he's going to be the favorite and just because he's won a few races in a row now and and how long is that going to keep going? I'm going to single uh, uh, a Chad Brown in here, Digital Age, uh, 
coming back to make uh, a, a, a start here. Hey, he won this race last year, although it was run in September. He's two for two uh, in his races at Churchill Downs. So I'm going to do $10 daily double tickets. Digital age to start it out in race 11 with my five Kentucky Derby horses, because Frankly, Brian, I'm very confident that one of those five, and it includes your hot rod, Charlie, is going to win the race. All right. There you go. Matt's got a couple doubles there. And, and one of them, he's saying Digital Age, who's got some decent morning line odds. I'm not, as you know, Digital Age is not going to be one of my top picks in that race. But he's kind of got that Divisadero thing going from a few years ago where he won the American turf as a three-year-old. And then he came back to win two editions of this turf classic. Uh, if uh, Digital Age, if Matt's right, if Digital Age can do it, that'll be his third big straight, uh, third straight big stakes win on Kentucky Derby uh, weekend over the Churchill Downs turf. So very interesting there. All right, Matt, I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom back to Friday because my best bet of the whole weekend, folks, yeah, that's right, my best bet of the whole weekend is a three-year-old filly, a lightly, lightly raced three-year-old filly, but I think she's just got a oodles of talent. Her name is Slumber Party. She's in the eight bells. If you saw her maiden win where she just trounced past the champagne, we all, we all know. In fact, Matt's pick was Malathod in the Kentucky Oaks who just barely beat past the champagne last time in the Ashland. So we all know that past the champagne is a real horse. Slumber Party trounced her. Last time, I think she was a little bit, uh, uh, maybe ridden with a little bit too much confidence, went second. But she's had two really good seven furlong races this year. That's a tricky distance. I think she's built for seven furlongs. That's what she's going to get in the eight bell. She's going to get plenty of speed. And I think that speed is key because the favorite in this race will be day out of the office. And day out of the office is going to have a tough time getting what she usually does. And that's the lead in these races. She also hasn't run yet this year. So I really like Slumber Party. I think she's going to be a nice filly. I think this race sets up for her well in a big field. She's got some odds on the morning line. I'm going to, I'm going to put 40 to win right on Slumber Party. And I think that could be a really nice payoff for a filly. I expect to win for trainer Kelly Breen. I also think Lil Tootsie is going to be ignored in here. I know she's eight to one on the morning line. I think she could be even higher. Last time in the Fairground Oaks, she made a move, but she was running against Clarier and Travel Column. And I don't think she wants two turns. I think this cutting back to seven furlongs is perfect for little Tootsie as a bit of a long shot. So I'm going to throw in an exact box at $5 exact box with little Tootsie and slumber party. Those two bets will cost you $50 folks. I like this race. Hey, Brian, sounds good. Uh, some nice bets, good size bets. And if they come in, you'll be looking good. All right, Matt. Uh, how about a pick six? We haven't talked about a pick six. This is a race. This is a bet that I might try because I think we got a free square possibly in this 20 cent wager. Yes, Brian. And I sir, that was certainly a reason that I was looking at the at the pick six. It's tw it's a 20 cent wager, but I'm also playing it because it is a mandatory payout. Uh, uh, there'll be no carryover, no jackpot required. Uh, to win this bet. So that's a big reason that I'm playing it also. Um, and because it's Derby Day and I want to try and make a big score, even starting it out with race seven, with Gamine for Bob Baffert. Boy, uh, if Gamine doesn't win, I'm going to be really surprised because quite frankly, she's a monster. Uh, um, and and we could see one of the races in here where she wins uh, by six, seven, eight uh, lengths again. So singling to start out with Gamine. I've got two other horses that I think are worthy singles also, but I'm not gonna put three singles in. I'm gonna do two different tickets. Gamine is gonna be single to start both of them. And then I'm gonna flip flop my other singles in there so that when they the other time i can spread a little bit in there so race eight is the return to one turn for jackie's warrior last year jackie's warrior was just so tough going uh going one turn jackie's warrior His last two don't look good but they were two turn efforts he's back to what he should be doing for steve 
Asmussen. He's got the top speed figures in the race. So on one of my tickets, I'm going to single uh, Jackie's Warrior. And then in races 9, 10, and 11, I'm going to spread. And the pick six ends with the Kentucky Derby with my top five choices, who, as I said before, I'm very confident that one of them is going to win the race. My other pick six ticket is basically the same, except I'm going to go down to race 11. You already know that I like digital age from that daily double. I'm going to take a shot in here and beat the shorter prices with a single on digital age. So on that ticket, I'm going to single Gamine to start and digital age in race 11. And then in Jackie's Warriors race, I'm going to throw a couple other horses in there and spread. Again, ending with my five Kentucky Derby top choices. Matt, I like it. Uh, what you got there is you got to pick five because I, like probably everybody else in the world, think Gamine is going to win that opening leg easy. So then it becomes a pick five. You also got a mandatory payout, which is nice, which is what you want here. It, just in case no one hits it, or it, it, you know, you, you get everything. You know it's going to pay out uh, on Saturday, and there's going to be a lot of money in this little twenty cent pick six. Uh, Jackie's Warrior, yeah, he certainly could win. He likes the track. There are a couple tough Californians in there that I think he has to watch out for. I do want to mention the, uh, the the sprint race, the Churchill Downs. This is a race I've had some success in before. It didn't make my favorite bets for the show, but there's a long shot I like quite a bit in there. His name is Shake, Shake, Shake Me Up. Uh, this is a horse who's flashed some talent as a three-year-old. He's moved to Peter Miller's barn, and now he's a sprinter, and I think he's getting good at the right time. He's actually my top pick in that race, so I hope Matt... Uh, thinks about throwing Shay, Shay, shake me up in that Churchill Downs race. All right, Matt, that's your pick six. Good luck with it. I'm going to look at one more wager on, on Saturday. It's a real simple down and dirty one. Colonel Liam, I think uh, nine furlongs fits his style. There's not a lot of speed in here. I think he can be relatively close. I just think he's become very, very good. And despite, Matt's right, this is a very good race with seven, eight, nine very good turf horses in here. I think he's the best one. So I think he's going to run first or second in here. So I'm going to have a $20 exact a box and smooth leg straight four to one on the morning line. I think it'll be higher. But I, as, I, as I mentioned, this is a this is a horse who's won a Churchill dance before. He's a very consistent, classy horse. He's always out on or near the lead early. And there's just no speed in this race. I think smooth leg straight can get very brave in such a race. $20 exact a box, Colonel Liam and smooth leg straight in the old Worcester turf classic Matt you know what time it is hey it's it going to be exciting for the horse center fans people have been asking to see Tony Bada Bing oh my god there he is Tony Bada Bing welcome <laughs> hip-hop derby derby hey derby hey I'm out of the control room and I'm on screen with my two my two best I would say betting buddies on derby day Love, love being here. Appreciate you having me. Tony, Tony don't, uh, don't assume it's going to be a regular uh, occurrence, <laughs> you know, showing up on camera. Tony, you've been on a quest to hit the superfecta in the Kentucky Derby over the years. And I know you've gotten very close, heartbreakingly close at times. Uh, this is true, Matt. I uh, thank you. appreciate you bringing up the three for four that I usually get and watch. In fact, in 2013, I was with, I was with Brian. We were at the eighth pole. Orb was running by, and so was it Normandy Invasion, Golden Soul, Revolutionary. I had all those horses on my ticket, and I didn't have them in the right order for $11,000 that day. I left instilled regard off a justified ticket. I put him on my other super effect. That was 20 K always dreaming three out of four. That was 70 K I'm ready. I'm ready to hit it. I'm ready to hit it with you guys and for all our fans here on horse center. So what do you say? Should I get right to it? Don't Tony. I think this is your the first year in horse center. I think this is your year, my friend. Oh, this could be it. All right. So if I hit it, I got to come back right next derby. <laughs> or, or if not, if not sooner. <laughs> All right, so here it is. The Superfecta, $1 base. I love that it's a $1 base. 
I don't like the dime base. I don't play it for that. So we're going to go for that $1 base bet. And I, I am keying three horses on top. So I'm going to have three separate tickets. And my best ticket, the bet, I'm keying Hot Rod Charlie on top. That's the play. I know you guys like him as well. I feel like Louisiana Derby was the race, and you'll see why in a second, who the other horse that I like, or one of the other horse I like to key on top. But I'm going to use Known Agenda. I'm going to use uh, Medina Spirit, Amanda Loon even, Obesos. I'm going to use any co a couple combinations of those horses coming in second and third, and even going to throw in the favorite, Essential Quality, for fourth, and Bourbonic. Now, I know he's not fast enough, but he might be able to pick up pieces to come in fourth place. That's the bet I like the best. Now, in, this, in the Superfector, over 116,000 possible combinations. I'm going to have 172 of them relying on Hot Rod Charlie. <laughs> nice. Hey, folks, if Tony hits the Superfector, he, he doesn't have a great shot to win this bet, and he knows that. We, he, didn't, he, he doesn't have a whole lot of tickets here, but he's taking a shot with some horses that he likes. He only needs to hit this bet literally about once in a lifetime. So we're all rooting for him. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So now that I have the big bet out of the way, I go for the cover. The cover bet is Obesos. I loved him in the Louisiana Derby like you did. He was really coming on. You watched that gallop out. He's stronger than Hot Rod Charlie during that gallop out. I feel he wants the distance. Uh, of course, he's going to have to navigate some traffic. But I'm going to take a shot here. 20 to 1 on the morning line, I think. I think he's going to be greater than that. And I'm going to, of course, include Hot Rod Charlie underneath. I'm going to uh, move up Essential Quality, and I'm going to have Rocky World in there as well. Now, Rocky World, I feel, you know, he's got the fastest speed figure. He's a strong choice. I know people out there like him. But if Mike Smith wants to go at Midnight Bourbon, you know, to that front of the, uh, of the pace, are we going to see a 44 half mile or 45? Then I feel, you know, Ob Obesos has a real shot here if that pace does develop, like I think it might with Mike Smith. He's, he's done this before in the past, Palace Malice. I, I, I watched and witnessed and bet on that one as well uh, as, you know, so Bodie Meister, I had that horse as well. We, we were there for that race as well. And he went fast 45 seconds, I think for that first half. I'm gonna right. put in King Fury to, to bottom out that, that superfecta. You know, hopefully again, we're swinging. This is a little less. This is 89 combinations, $89. I don't like this bet as much, but I'm going to take a shot with another horse I feel can win. Excellent, Tony. Obesis, uh, if you hit a super factor with Obesis on top, more power to you, brother. <laughs> and then I'm going to go to the horse that Matt has talked me into. I know that you don't love him as much, but Sainthood. I mean, you do watch that, that Jeff Ruby stakes, and he is stopped. Right. And maybe the horses in front of him aren't that fast, but he regathered so quickly. He seems to be a very athletic horse. We know Pletcher brings them if they're healthy and he feels they're ready. Um, this horse, if he can navigate through, he can, might be even closer than he was in that Jeff Ruby stakes. He has been close to the pace previously. And if he finds a way through at 50 to one, I want every part of him. So I'm going to take, I'm going to call this ticket the dream catcher, right? This is the one, this is the hundred grand plus baby. So we're talking sainthood on top, hot ride, Charlie, essential quality, Obestus in second. And then some others in there for fourth place, including helium. What the hell? Just throw helium in. Why not? King Fury, Bubonic, uh, Dynamic One. So this is the ticket, right? This is the once in a lifetime zipper, Matt, that I want to cash. So this is only, only going to be $52. I wanted to stay within $300 for all my supers. I think it comes out to $310. But man, if Sainthood has a shot, you're going to hear me all the way from the Bay State to, to Jersey, <laughs> to, to Kentucky, to all the way to California, baby, if this one comes in. Good luck, Tony. What, what, do, you, what do you think, Matt? Uh, hey, I, I think Tony is doing the right thing in the Kentucky Derby Super uh, Superfecta because you can play Superfectas all year long as much as you want, but only once a year can you do it with 20 horses in the field in the Kentucky Derby. So Tony's not going to, he's not boxing the top uh, four choices in the Superfecta. He's going for the gusto because there's only gusto like this once a year in American racing. Yes. Swinging for the fences. Excellent. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. Tony, and I loved having you on the show. I think after people see you, maybe uh, <laughs> after the Derby, things could change a little bit, but I think they see you on the show once they're going to ask to have you on more and more. 
Hey, Matt, what about a party chop from you, my friend? Hey, I want to say uh, thank you, everybody, for watching the, the, the show these past couple of weeks. We have had so many viewers. And if you're new viewers, I'll hope you'll stay with us uh, throughout the year. And, and most of all, I want to wish you all good luck uh, and get some bombers, cast some big tickets in the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, and, and since we have Tony here, Tony, you ready for a parting shot? Yeah, baby. Derby, Oaks, lots of great feels, big races. I like, I like the tickets I've, I've seen from both of you. You got to take some shots with some longer odds. You got to try to cash in on those short prices and, and group longer odds with them. It's great two days of betting. You got to go get it. Derby, Oaks, thanks for having me. Peace out. Thank you, Tony Bada Bing, our wonderful producer for everything he does for the show. Thank you to Candace Curtis for those great race graphics that she provided. Thanks to our sponsor, the best contest site out there, Derby Wars. And of course, folks, thanks to all of you for watching. I know a lot of you are terming, ter tuning in just for the Derby, but uh, hey, you might be hooked after this. Uh, uh, it, it could happen. You never know. <laughs> Good luck, folks. Good luck, folks. We'll, we will be back, of course, with a ton of triple down, triple crown coverage the rest of the month, including next week. We'll have some derby review and we'll start talking preakness already. Cash those tickets big.